Hi, I'm Chris Garlock, and I'm here with Eric Kotzen. <laughs> uh, we're at the Kotzen Tournament uh, and uh, here in uh, beautiful Los Angeles, and um, good to have a chance to sit down with you, Eric. Good chance. Good to have a chance to sit down myself. I know. Uh, we were going to sit down before the first round, but things were a little hairy this morning. and uh, We've had a lot of challenges, uh, but the least the good one is we have a record... Uh, tournament here What's in terms count? of mass. It's well over 200. I haven't asked. It is over 200. We've never had over 200, so that's been really good. Um, of course, it it had to come on the tournament where we had all these other challenges, which made it just that much more difficult, but it seems to be going reasonably well. I saw a bunch of people happily playing Go, so that's, that's, the, the, that's bottom the bottom line. line. So. Yeah. Uh, which let's get right into it. Uh, you have a story about how did you wind up with uh, you know the Kotzen Open having your own tournament? Well, a friend of mine uh, learned the game at business school in Northwestern, and uh, we were all gamers. Had a group of gamers. We played all sorts of different games, and he taught us that. And it seemed really interesting and fascinating because it wasn't just you learned it and then it was kind of like I've been there, done that. I I know how to play. There was always different levels of learning, which I really liked. Um, but it was tough for me to find a game other than my close group of friends, um, and they weren't always available. Um, and so we discovered that there was a, a uh, you know, occasionally they would have tournaments or something. So we went to a tournament, I think at uh, the Korean club or something, a long, long time ago. And I said, well, this is great. I'm finding people who are my strength. I can play. When's the next one? They said, oh, you know, next year. I go, no, I can't wait that long. So I said, oh, how much is the tournament? And they gave me some ridiculously low number. I said, oh, well, I'll put on my own tournament, and I'll find people to play that way. Mm -hmm. And that's how it started. Now, this tournament uh, has some really interesting uh, characteristics, uh, some <laughs> unusual things. Anybody that knows you knows that you, of course, would not do a normal tournament. God forbid. But why don't you just sort of lay out some of the things that, uh, that make this an unusual tournament? Well, I like to do things that I enjoy, and the fact that they may not be traditional or fall into the, you know, the, the standard format uh, doesn't bother me of anything that actually interests me. So... I tense up in games. It'd be really nice to get a massage, so I have masseuses. Uh, I'm sort of a candy holic, probably uh, for the worse, not for the better. But so we have free candy. Um, I can testify that he had not one but two Reese's peanut butter. Cups. Not yet. Oh, not, not yet. yet. <laughs> not Holding that second one off. <laughs> All right. um, I like you know this is something I did when I started uh, my company, uh, the Princeton Review. I would feed my kids really well, probably way too well for the bottom line. But so I, I, I didn't want anyone not to be able to eat because they were on a budget or whatever. So I like to treat everyone to gourmet tacos. I think it was Koji truck today. It was so good. And they were I really just good. Say, got Koji rules. Yes, it really <laughs> it's is good. Tacos. And they were very kind. They 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 pushed the bat the hour the window back we for an hour when we were running today. late, and they didn't charge you. So that was really great. I, I think I hugged the guy. He was a little shocked. Because of all the stuff we had going on, but um, you know, th there's that. Uh, there's money prizes. There's kind of fun trophies. There's uh, a pro demonstration game tomorrow. There's simuls going on. My young, I mean, it's just you know, it's a lot of fun. You do another thing too. You you have um, a club prize. Yes, because we want to promote you know clubs. You know, clubs are one of the sort of on the ground generators of interest and, and continue to play. <laughs> And uh, so we have a club prize for the club that comes in with the most members, I think, and in uh, combination of members and rank and how well they do. Right. But, um, but it's kind of cool because it really kind of, you see people kind of you know, checking in and see how other people, first of all, you get really good turnout from yeah. our clubs as far away, I think, as Phoenix. Is kind yeah, of Phoenix came there. with a huge contingent pretty regularly. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Now, of course, this has been a big year uh, for, for Go through AlphaGo. I wanted to sort of get your take. Uh, on I think that. it's fascinating. I mean, you know, some people were worried that it would, it would actually diminish interest in Go. And from at least from the short term, it seems to actually increase mm -hmm. interest because, you know, the name got mentioned in a lot of mainstream publications. People right. went, oh, what's that game? I would have loved to have AlphaGo actually in my tournament, uh, but evidently it's quite a big endeavor and, you know. Google has problems with their cash flow. <laughs> I'm sure that's the reason. I'm sure. But uh, I would, I mean, 
there's there's similes to that program that are coming, and I would love to have them actually play as a tournament because I think it's really interesting to play a, a computer versus a person because they're different things and it's fascinating. And that whole that whole match was really interesting. I really enjoyed following it and you know the magic move and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I think that's great. So we can finish up with uh, just a question. I always have to check in with you about how your game is going. You've been playing for how long now have you been playing? Since 84, maybe? Okay. I know you've been sitting with Mr. Yang for, for quite yes. a long time. Um, I think so. I'm, I'm understanding a lot more of the game. Uh, I think my reading, though, uh, has perhaps diminished a bit. I don't know whether it's just because I'm older or whatever, um, so uh, I think I'm capable of a lot more. I think my, uh, my understanding of the game is at the two don level, and my reading is at the you know four Q level. <laughs> so I am averaging out around two Q now. Do you uh, have any advice for folks out there uh, who might be interested in starting their own tournament? What's uh, what are Things to watch out for. Is it is it easier than you thought? Harder than you thought? I know this has been a tough year. This is a really tough year. Well, there's particular not only I mean, the logistic ones. Those were exceptions. I don't expect the person who runs my tournament to have a family emergency that prevents them from actually running the tournament normally. Right. Um, but I have found out. You know, we used to do things. It's it's actually pretty challenging um, from a financing viewpoint, at least to do it through a nonprofit. Um, it is possible that in future years, if I can't figure out a way to do it, um, that I might have to cut the prize money, uh, which would be really a bummer. Um, it's not a huge element of uh, the tournament, but it's evidently very difficult to award prize money from a nonprofit. Hmm. Um, and they're making it more difficult, and anyways. But um, it's great. I think in any local interest, I mean, little, it doesn't have to be a big tournament like mine. It could be, you know, small. Generates interest, another place to play. Last question. You know, I ask you this question every year, but in, and, and it's interesting because your answer is not always the same. So mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your favorite thing about the game? My favorite thing about the game is that I'm always learning something. Mm. And I think what I'm learning often is reflected in my challenges on a larger scale in life. You know, I have a difficult time focusing. Um, and sometimes I have a difficult time focusing in my game, you know, reading something out to the appropriate level. Uh, on the other hand, I always thought one of my strengths was the fact that I would lose focus and get bored with a fight and go somewhere else, and that was actually the proper tanuki. <laughs> By weighing everything carefully, which I wasn't really doing, I was just like, okay, I'm kind of bored with that fight, I'm gonna go over here, and that was actually the right move, so I would luck into that sometimes. But uh, it's just the different learning, it's like, oh wow, that's really interesting. And, how it reflects on my learning in general. I find that constantly rewarding. All right, well, Eric Coates, and we really appreciate your uh, being here with us and uh, pleasure. this tournament. And uh, if you're uh, go, go. Be in LA, you know, go, go. And be Absolutely, here we do it every year. You guys, everyone's welcome. We're gonna try to make it bigger and better each year. And this year we kind of, you know, enrollment-wise, kind of hit it out of the park. And hopefully next year we can do better. Oh, and we have to do this. We have to give credit to uh, this year, the Korean Cultural Center. Absolutely. Oh, that. my God. These guys are great. The Korean Cultural Center, which we've done it for a number of years here uh, before, and they're always superior, and they just are, you know, so supportive. And it's a great building and a great sort of organization documenting a lot of the cultural history for uh, Koreans and people of Korean descent. Come visit. All right. Thanks again, Absolutely. Eric. And uh, we'll be back with some more special reports very soon. Thanks for watching. All right.